Have you ever been playing Animal Crossing and had a bunch of cute animal villagers move in and really want to kill all of them? Like that bitch Tammy? Well, I've got a game for you then. The Cult of the Lamb. Cult of the Lamb is a roguelike slash colony simulator that's kind of like a mixture between Animal Crossing, Hades, Oregon Trail, and Satanism. In the Cult of the Lamb, you play as the Lamb, who starts off their journey on their way to be executed by these creepy overlords known as bishops. These four bishops are keeping another demon lord chained away, known as the One Who Waits. And you are the only thing remaining that can fulfill the prophecy of his unchaining. But fortunately, as the axe falls, you're transported to where the One Who Waits is trapped away. He offers you another attempt at life at the cost of building a cult in his name. And I thought to myself, hmm, eternal engendered servitude. Absolutely. You accept the responsibility and don the red crown, feeling the power of the one who waits course through your veins, prepared to wage war against any one of the demonic bishops of the old faith who have wrongly chained away your god. What's going on in this game? You were given a plot of land to build out your cult, and your first potential follower is summoned at the center of town. I indoctrinated them in, put them to work, cutting down wooden rocks, and my new life as the leader of the cult of butt fungus began. I'll explain that later. While your new member grinds away, you can go on your own adventure into the lands of the Old Faith. Your mission is to slay the bishops that murdered you while also gathering resources, devotion, and finding new members for your cult. I was very surprised at the combat in this game. It's good. It's fast, it's fluid, it's classic hack and slash. There's plenty of weapons and abilities to try out and upgrade. It's not particularly deep or extensive, but that actually fits pretty well because the game is tilted more towards building your colony rather than becoming the ultimate warrior. I mean, you play as a cute ass lamb in a diaper, what'd you expect? Each dungeon you go through has a similar setup. You fight your way through connected rooms that lead to the end of a level, where you can select your next level with varying rewards, leading to an eventual last level boss fight. But in order to fight one of the main four bishops, which are in their own separate biomes, you'll need to go through each dungeon three times and defeat the last level mini boss before your fourth and final run, where you battle one of the bishops, kill them, rip their heart out, bring it back to your cult, and bask in the blood of the conquered fool. Does that make sense? If not, it's pretty easy. Just play the game, you'll figure it out. I played the game on hard, but that's kind of because I'm a bit of a roguelikes pro. Not a big deal. But I won't lie, the first two biomes I went through felt very easy. But it eventually does get more challenging, and if you need more of a challenge, you can change your fleece, your cloak drip, to add bonuses to your character at the cost of some major negatives, like cutting your health Oh, in it half. does stuff too. Oh, my hand cramp. Oh, that's such a nerd. That's such a nerd move right there. While your main goal is to go out and kill all four bishops, the main gameplay is gonna take place back at home at your cult. As a cult leader, you have many things to do. Farm your crops, build your structures, repair buildings, bless your followers, sacrifice one of them, give daily sermons. What was that? Give daily sermons? The way you level up your cult and get to build new structures is by gathering devotion from your followers. You can generate it in multiple ways, like members worshipping at the shrine at the center of town, you can gather it from leveling up the faith of members, or you can rip fire sermons every day like it's the last night at a church retreat and everybody's bawling their eyes out. Once you level up your devotion, you can go to the shrine and unlock structures like a lumber mill, a farm, a shelter, a prison. What was that? A prison? Okay. Okay. Now the most effective way to level up your cult is to have more people. The more followers you have, the more resources you'll get, the more devotion you'll have, the more poop you'll acquire. I'm actually mentioning that for a reason, but we'll get back to that later. <laughs> You can get followers a couple of ways, like saving them in the lands of the old faith, you can defeat bosses to acquire them, or you can buy them. You know, in the... not in the bad way. You just take them under your wing to work your land for f free. <laughs> What's really cool is when you're a streamer, when you indoctrinate somebody into your cult, you can actually have a raffle where the audience can participate, create their own character, and it'll have their username in the game. So basically by the end of the game, my entire cult was all Twitch members, and it made things super interactive and fun. This guy's useless. An idiot. I will say that bugged a couple of times where viewers couldn't finish creating their character, and that's why I named the cult after one of those people that that happened to, uh, Emperor Butt Fungus. That's why... I the cult is called the Cult of Butt Fungus. Had to be him, huh? Now with more cult members, that does mean that there's more to manage. They need to eat, they need to sleep, they need to poop. People can starve, people can get sick, people can die. <gasps> Fuck! No! How do people get sick? Well, that's where poop comes into play. Poop? But what does poop mean? Whether it's caused by food poisoning, or it's an emergency loaf pinch, or maybe it's just a regular old dookie drop, your followers are eventually going to need to blow mud. What the hell's going on here? Shit is involved in a surprisingly large fraction of gameplay. Now at the start, 
they got nowhere to go, so you gotta pick it up. Fortunately, I was already a pro at this because back in middle school, my primary source of income was being the family pooper scooper, a quarter of poo. Having Dookie around can make your followers sick and kill them quick. The shit gets real. You get it because fortunately, scat doesn't always have negatives. You can use it to fertilize your crops and get bonus rewards. You can prank a follower into eating a bowl of poop for a good laugh. You can feed your follower dishes that can make your people poop. And you can also make your people poop. A little pro tip when you're fighting a wave of the hot snakes at the beginning, and this might not be a pro tip at all and maybe bad advice, but I think you should build a janitor's closet first rather than an outhouse because an outhouse is more for collecting the feces for cross production. And a janitor's closet keeps your followers responsible for the mess they've made after they volcanoed out of both ends. You feel? All right, somebody's pooping. Oh, he's, he's cleaning it up himself. All right, nice. Once you put a cork in the poop problem, it's time to talk about what the villagers do besides crap and puke. Of course, your slate followers work for you uh, and gather resources, but that's in almost every colony sim. What stood out to me is the relationship aspect of the game. Your people can love you or they can hate you, depending on how you rule. What do you need? You can bless them or punish them. They can sing your praises or they can dissent to the point of leaving the cult entirely and taking as many people as they can with them. Who is dude? I'm trying to build a fucking shit house. But the relationships aren't just with you, they'll interact with each other. They can become friends, they can pull pranks on each other, they can hate each other. What you got? Leader Ivernex prank. Put Ekakon again? Dude, this guy is just harassing this dude. And they can even become lovers. God damn. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on here? You're still my wife. They can also ask you to perform tasks for them, which are like little mini quests that build faith with them. Sometimes it's saving their sister in the lands of the old faith. <laughs> Other times it can be one of them asking you to murder somebody else because apparently everybody hates them. Up? Some followers have been talking, saying you are weak. Give us a display of strength. Show us that you have the power over life and death. Murder Ugly <laughs> Duffy. <laughs> I bet you won't. <laughs> And sometimes it's them confessing that they have a poop eating fetish um, that they told you in confidence. Benevolent leader, please don't judge me, but I've always wanted to eat a meal made of poop. Will you f What? What's interesting is members age and eventually they will die. And all these actions and interactions play out day in and day out, whether you're at the cult or not. And that's something that's really awesome about Cult of the Lamb is its automation. There was plenty of room where the devs could have made large portions of this game a chore, like hitting rocks every day in Animal Crossing. But through well done character AI and quick satisfying actions, I could not stop smiling through the whole game. Every character, regardless of where you assign them, will kind of float around and assist where needed. If you're building a large structure, people will come and help automatically. If your crops need to be watered, somebody's gonna go do it. And the more structures you build, the more automation that happens. An upgraded farm will let one of your farmers pick plants for you, or you can build a janitor's closet where people can clean up throw up. Now going back to my journey, my first cult, I ruled with my heart. I was a good cult leader. I named the cult after the people, it was nice, it was lax. I treated them as best as I could. Only a few sacrifices. Okay, you could keep your name. There was minimal punishment for transgressions. Ever think about that, bitch? It was non-denominational. I loved them. So much so that I even married one of them. On accident. And then a couple more. Do I just forcibly marry them? Let's see if I can do it. Oh, I marry them! No! I don't want to marry this freak! But time passed. And after I married my third bride, I started thinking to myself, could I keep a cult around even if I was a total dick? What if I took things into my own hooves? And that's what I set out to do on my second playthrough. I created... The Cult of Earl. The Cult of Earl was selfish to its core, hence the name is named after my middle name. <laughs> Stop laughing. You might be asking, how do you become a jerk leader? Well, along with teaching sermons at your temple, you can also create doctrines that make performable actions and rituals available for your cult to perform. The catch is, each doctrine that you make, you only have two choices you can choose from. And choosing one locks the ability to choose the other. And for the most part, your decisions are option A, be nice to your cult, or option B, do you hate your cult and or are you a bad person? A prime example of one of these doctrines is the choice between being able to marry one of your cult members or option B, creating a fighting pit where two of your members fight to the death. Are those wedding bells ringing or is it a cage match about to begin? 
In the Cult of Earl, I chose uh, every evil doctrine I could. I can tax my followers? Yes, please. Murder follower action? Sign me up. My cults can literally become cannibals and eat each other? All right. I chose every one of these mean doctrines and my cult loved it. I thought everyone was gonna be dissenting every 30 seconds and pooping all over the place. Nope, I built a bunch of prisons for no reason. But seriously, if you keep your cult well fed, give them some homes, keep the place clean, they'll pretty much do whatever you ask them to. And these certain rituals that seemed harsh or extreme at first, now they've all kind of become accustomed to. Like, yes, we sacrifice every old person. What, what is the big deal? Woo, he's gone. Yes, sometimes we eat them. <laughs> Harvest meat. Oh man, go back to sleep. That's your bed, that's your bed now. Sure, I put every person that has an ounce of doubt in me as their leader into a prison cell and forget to re-educate them and feed them for days on end, but like, they had the same orientation as everybody else. Regardless, the cult of Earl became a powerhouse of a colony. Work camps, uh, sites, that generate record-breaking amounts of resources, constant daily prayer and devotion, enforced loyalty and happiness. We made quick work of the bishops that laid ahead. As a team, but mainly me, and that was the story of the Cult of Earl. Now all jokes aside, the Cult of the Lamb is a pretty remarkable game. Of course, we gotta mention right away, how friggin' sick is this art style? It's a perfect blend of cute, smooth, creepy, clean design, like Paper Mario meets Limbo. And I'm sure you've noticed that the background music absolutely slaps. I think every single Twitch viewer commented this, like, we are in full agreement, they've got some bangers. Along with that, the sound design is super oddly satisfying, and the character voices are hilarious. I kill you. <laughs> I will say I've ran into a few bugs, one hard crash, but the bugs are kind of funny. Like one of my Twitch members like duplicated himself after I logged back on and so we just had a pair of twin CM winners in our game. I've heard some people say that the game doesn't have enough content in it and I'll say for a $25 game, I easily got $35 out of it and that was after I kind of rushed to beat the game just to make this video and I only really scratched the surface of like the decorating aspect of the game. So personally, I very much think it's worth it. My only slight gripe, and this is more for the developers, some of the quick time animations were a little long. Like if you were to bless one of your members or even teaching sermons, like there's some time that we could shave off there, especially after you like level up somebody after you bless them. It's like, we can pick this up. The gameplay loop itself is just solid, it's airtight. Whether you're out fighting a bishop or coming back to the cult where there's shit everywhere and two dead bodies in the center of town, the game is just jam-packed with fun variety throughout the whole game. And yes, this game does have an end. Unlike Animal Crossing, where as an adult you start questioning the pointlessness of this digital world, your cult feels entirely alive with daily decisions that you make that actually make a difference in how your society plays out. I did not expect to like this game as much as I did, but it really sank its teeth into me and took a full bite out of me because my followers are cannibals. I love this game, I highly recommend it, and I hope you like it if you play it, and if you don't, Go fuck yourself. No, uh, <laughs> if you buy it, I hope you have fun playing it, and thanks for watching. Don the Red Crown, feeling the one who waits his power, of course, through your vein. Fucking hell, I'm gonna fuck this up so many times. Ready to prepare, prepare to re flow through your fucking hell. Wage war against, fuck, I almost had it. Prepare to, feeling the one, Old bish demonic bishops of the old faith. Old bishops, fuck, who have wrongly chained away your god. Okay, who have wrongfully chained away your fuck of the old faith. Who have wrongly chained away your god. That have wrongly unchained. All right, got it. Don the red crown, feeling the power of the one who waits. Course through your. Did that just turn off? I had it. You accept the responsibility. <laughs> wage war against any one of the demonic bishops of the old faith who have wrongly chained away your god. Ah. <sighs> Finally, I got the fucking line.